Hey, this is Mike with vidmuse.com here with another exciting freebie for you guys. Today we're going to go ahead and see how we can add some simple shell ejections to our gun props in our films and create a more realistic gun shooting effect. Now, let's just take a look at the before and after clips here and see exactly what we'll be able to do. And action. All right, so right away we're seeing several different elements. One, we've obviously got our sound effects in here. Next, we've got our muzzle flash. We then have a nice smoke emitting from our barrel. And then we have the actual shell ejection itself. Now, you all will be pleased to know that you are able to download directly three different shell ejections that I've created. We've got a 12-gauge shotgun shell that's rotating around. We have the 45 caliber pistol round rotating around. And then last, we have our 223 rifle round. Now, all this stuff is pre-keyed, meaning the alpha channel is included, uh, as well as it is rendered at 60 frames per second, so it has a nice slow motion effect. So if you want to go ahead and do a slow motion scene with it, you certainly can, or if not, you can speed it up to real time speed. Now the link will be down in the description. Feel free to download that. Use it where you want. It's there for you guys to enjoy. So let's take a look here in After Effects and take a look and see how to add this shell ejection. So we have our raw footage. We're going to go ahead and drag that down onto the new comp window. And we're going to find our starting position. And then we're going to do Alt, bracket in. Now, one nice thing you're going to see about this particular shot is we are using a gas-powered airsoft pistol so that it is racking back with each fire. Uh, this obviously gives it a much more realistic look as well. But if your gun does not have that, you can actually animate and give the illusion that the slide is racking back during each fire. Next, let's go ahead and import the 45 caliber pistol animation. Now I'm also going to be importing some muzzle flashes. Now all these muzzle flashes I did create using real weapons. You can go to my website, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description, but uh, you can go ahead and buy that muzzle flash kit if you'd like. And there are 24 individual muzzle flashes there. So I'm going to go ahead and import uh, one side muzzle flash as well as two straight muzzle flashes. Then another thing I'm going to go ahead and import is a smoke charge. Now the smoke charge is also available online. Uh, if you'd like to purchase that as well, and again, I will leave links down below. But I'm going to go ahead and add that, and now we're ready to go ahead and assemble things. So let's go ahead and find out where the first fire is, which is right at this point. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag one of these muzzle flashes down first. So we'll go ahead and drag it down. We'll go ahead and scale it down. Hit the letter S, scale down, and we're going to go ahead and change the transfer mode to screen. Now you can add additional lighting to the hands and to the face, different things like that, but for this tutorial we're just going to go ahead and just quickly add this in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead one frame and then alt close bracket again to close it so our muzzle flash is there just for that one frame. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put in my smoke charge. See we're going to have to rotate it around. Down W, rotate around and add up here. Now the speed is going to have to change. We can right click, choose time, time stretch, and we can do 25 and it's going to increase it. And we'll change the transfer mode to screen as well. And right away you can kind of see that smoke coming out of there. Now we're ready for our shell ejection. So we'll go ahead and grab our shell ejection and drag it down. Change the scale. Again, as I said before, this will be rotating slowly, so it's already set for slow motion if you'd like. Since this is a real-time clip, we need to speed this up. So it is fairly slow with the rotations, so we're going to go ahead and do a time stretch and go from 100 and go all the way down to 10. So it's really going to speed that clip up. Now if you need to have this loop more, if the length is not long enough, you can certainly duplicate it. 
hold down shift and then scoot it down until it locks into place and now your shell will continue to loop. We do not need it that long for this example. Let's go ahead and shrink it down and put it in position. Go ahead and turn off the smoke as well as the muzzle flash so we can see exactly what we're doing. Go ahead and scale it down again. About right here. Now for this example, we're gonna go ahead and hand animate and just add some simple keyframes. Uh, another method with the uh, machine gun is actually doing a particle emitter. And uh, we can certainly show that in another tutorial. We're gonna go ahead and set our position keyframe there. So turn on a little stopwatch. A keyframe has been created. And let's scoot forward. And now we're gonna go ahead and drag our shell out of frame because it's gonna kick it off to camera left here. And now we have these little handles where we can now start to kind of aim it so that it kind of gives a more natural up and then let gravity kind of take it down. So with this, we're going to go ahead and pull it up, pull it down, and we'll go ahead and preview that. And it's a little fast, so we'll go ahead and extend this keyframe out. Make the animation a little bit slower. So that's about a good speed there. Then for the last touch, we'll go ahead and add motion blur. So we'll go and enable the motion blur. And then enable it for our comp. You can see that bullet is nice and blurry. If you have too much motion blur, what you can do is right click on your comp. Go to composition settings go to advance and shutter angle. I actually have mine cranked up. By default it's about 180 but the higher that number the more motion blur you're gonna see. So we'll go ahead and let that preview through and looks good. And that's basically it. And now you can go ahead and do the same thing. We'll go ahead and enable our muzzle flash again and put our shell ejection below our muzzle flash. Alright now that that's done we'll look and Ryan fires two more times in this shot. Go ahead and move to the next shot. I'm going to go ahead and Command D and duplicate the shell ejection. So we're going to come back. I'm going to hit the letter U. It's going to bring up my keyframes for my position. I'm going to zoom in here. And again, with our scrubber on our first keyframe, I can go ahead and move this shell to the proper location here. And then we can go to the end of the second keyframe. Go ahead and move this shell into a different location just to give it a little bit more randomness. And again, if we were doing a machine gun, I would definitely do a particle emitter. Uh, otherwise, we'll be here for hours making tweaks to every single shell. Now we can do our muzzle flash again. Let's go ahead and grab a different one. We'll add our muzzle flash. We'll shrink it down. Change the transfer mode to screen. Now keep in mind too that when a gun fires and a camera is filming it, you're not going to see the muzzle flash during every single fire. So it's kind of nice to maybe for the second shot go without a muzzle flash. So we can just move this down the third shot. Now we can still have our smoke for our second shot, obviously. But now when we fire, we're going to see muzzle flash, then the second shot with just the smoke, and then the third with the actual muzzle flash. And that will keep it a little bit more realistic because, again, you do not see the muzzle flash every single time. Now, the reason for this is when a camera is filming a gun going off, the muzzle flash is there for just uh, probably a thousandth of a second or a hundredth of a second and very, very minimal. And if that shutter is closed on the camera, so, you know, if you're shooting at a hundredth of a second, that shutter is going up and down a hundred times per second. If that shutter is closed when that gun goes off, you will not see it. You'll obviously see the smoke because the smoke is there longer than a thousandth of a second. But those muzzle flashes, it's a hit or miss, literally. So keep that in mind. Keep it realistic. Don't have muzzle flashes every single time. Uh, it looks a little cheesy. So... Again, we've got our shell ejection. Uh, we can go ahead and then duplicate that, add it to the next. And then you can even do that to the third. 
and you've got your shells. Now, once that's done, we want to go ahead and render this out. So do Control Command M, and then you can set your output module, save your output, hit render. There you go. Import it into your video editor. In this case, we're using Premiere. I'm going to go ahead and kind of start again here. So we're going to copy this and paste it down the line here. So now we've got our clip that is completed with no audio. Now as far as sound, you guys can get your own sound effects if you have them. Uh, you can record your own. Or uh, in the Vidmu store, I also have five different gun sound effects kits that include um, all sorts of different sound effects as far as holstering the gun, loading the gun, uh, ejecting the magazine, firing the gun, racking the gun, different things like that. So you guys are more than welcome to check that stuff out. So I went ahead and imported uh, some of these sound effects. So I've got an XD drawing. We're going to go ahead and rack the gun. So we'll drag that down. Go ahead and line up for our first fire. And we can drag down our first firing. Scrub forward. Add our second shot. And then our last shot. Add some simple music. And there you go. So again, the links will be in the description below and it will direct you to my site. And you can take a look at the uh, sound effects kits and muzzle flash kits and uh, download the uh, shell ejections for free. Hope you guys enjoy it. Do some creative stuff with it. Again, I'm Mike with VidMuse. We'll see you next time.